For this story, we spoke to two people, Megan Tachi, a high school English teacher, and Gary Marchant, a college law professor. Both have spent the summer thinking of how best to utilize AI in their classrooms, and both agree its presence is no longer a matter of if, but when. I was excited to see the ways that it helped me, and then turning that and leveraging that into something that could be embraced by students. For Tachi, her curriculum surrounds comprehension, so she's challenging her students to incorporate AI into their work this year, whether that's finding new ways to spark imagination or get the ball rolling on a paper or taking care of administrative tasks. She says she is grading for understanding, which is something AI cannot forge for her students. Ultimately, what you see with AI is very pattern-based, so it's not in the business of making an opinion or having a creative connection or structuring an argument in a way that's backed up with uh, interpretation beyond just presenting evidence. The same goes for Marchant, who teaches at Arizona State University. This month, the institution's law program became the first in the country to allow applicants to openly use AI in their applications. The reason, he says, because it's already largely used in the law field. It really is important that we sort of figure out how to adapt our teaching to basically teach them to practice law in the real world. And that's going to involve using AI in appropriate ways to understand its benefits, how it can be used, the, the good use cases, as you mentioned, but also what are the limitations and, and risks of using it as well. At Yale, for example, several courses incorporate artificial intelligence, including Italian, humanities, anthropology, and physics. In the university's writing humor course, there's an assignment where students reflect on what elements of writing can be replicated by AI and what elements are unique to a human author. It's the very reason Tachi isn't afraid that students are detracting from their education by leaning into the technology. The future is exciting to me because I think about, from an equity standpoint, how much access to information can change how people think and it can change their abilities. If it's leveraged and, and seen as a way to enhance your own skills or give you a sense of confidence in your own abilities rather than this is going to do the thinking for you. Google doesn't do the thinking for you. This isn't to say every teacher agrees. Both Tachi and Marchan acknowledge there's a cohort who prefers to keep AI out of the classroom, but they say that won't necessarily curtail its use as they believe this year is the year AI fully integrates itself into learning. I mean, I think it's going to happen this year. I mean, there's no question that, you know, most of our students are using this. Dan Grossman, Scripps News, Denver.